Listen, I really am cool. I'm on TV and stuff, all right? What's up, guys, and welcome back to the S3 Power Sports Shop, where today we're keeping the how-to videos rolling by showing you how to put wheel bearings in your Can-Am Maverick X3. From hand off Manny Fresh, he's gonna show you how to get it done. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to change your wheel bearings out on your Can-Am Maverick X3. Especially for you mud guys who seem to be going through them like they're going out of style, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. We're in the shop today, so we've made our own custom tooling since we deal with these models a lot to help facilitate the process, but you can go to your local tool store and pick up some wheel bearing service kits and get the job done as well. Depending on your specific model, the backup wrench on the sway bar might be a little different from year to year. Now with a few simple hand tools, you can get this job done. For your socket, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter, a 15 millimeter, and an 18 millimeter. You're gonna need a six inch extension, some needle nose pliers, a screwdriver, and an 18 and 15 millimeter wrench. If you want everything to work like it was intended to from the factory, we recommend you use the OEM bearing. There are a lot better tolerances, and they're gonna last you a lot longer, and you're gonna get better life out of it. So let's get the work started and get these bearings in. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our wheel and tire off. We're gonna do the front today. Doing the rear is very similar to the front, but it's pretty much the same thing. Go ahead and get your dust cover off your axle nut. Get your cotter pin out of the way. And bend it over. Straighten her out and pull her out the other side. Now using your 30 millimeter, go ahead and bust your axle nut loose. All right, now you can grab your needle nose. Go ahead and get the cotter pin off from the tie rod bolt and we can get our 18s and loosen the tie rod bolt. Now you can take the bolt out. And go ahead and rest your tie rod over to the side and get out of the way. All right, now we can get our brake caliper off. Go ahead and grab your 15 millimeter. We'll go ahead and break the two caliper bolts and set our caliper out of the way. Using a 15 millimeter end wrench and a 15 millimeter socket, go ahead and bust your lower ball joint bolt. Now you might have to wiggle the A-arms a little bit to get the bolt out, but she should come right out. Now that you got your axle nut off, go ahead and pop your hub off. Grab your rubber mallet, tap on your lower A-arm, go ahead and get the ball joint broke loose from the knuckle. Now you can go ahead and break loose your lower shock bolt. Once you get the lower shock bolt out, go ahead and get your shock out of the way. If you don't have nobody to help you, grab you a bungee or something, wrap it around the end, and then hook it to the top of the chop tower brace. All right, now using a 19 millimeter backup wrench and an 18 millimeter socket, depending on the year model, this might be a 15 as well. We can go ahead and break the sway bar link loose. Once you get your sway bar link out of the way, you can pick up on the upper A arm, pick it up all the way so we can get the axle out of the knuckle. Now we got our axle out of there, we'll go ahead and break this clip loose off the upper ball joint and then we can take the nut off. Using your six inch extension, come in through the lower ball joint hole, put your 19 millimeter socket on there and then go ahead and break the upper ball joint nut loose. So using a brass hammer, go ahead and tap the knuckle a little bit until she breaks loose from the ball joint. So before you can press your bearing out, you need to take the safety retainer clip out of the way Hold on one side with your screwdriver. Go ahead and grab your pick or another screwdriver and you can pop the other end out and then work it around the bearing. All right, now that we got access to a bearing, we'll go over to our press, get the old one out, put the new one in. Whatever you use needs to have a flat, firm surface around this edge right here. And it does need to make sure that it clears the bearing. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and level, center it up, and we can go ahead and press the old bearing out. So if you're trying to save your bearing, you need to be a little more careful what you put on this end to push the bearing out. If you're not worrying about it, then you go ahead and just push it out regular. We got the old bearing out. Now we need to prep this surface. Go ahead and make sure you get all the dirt and debris out of there and scuff up the faces. Make sure they're all nice and clean. And then we can put a new bearing in. So you can use a little bit of Scotch-Brite. Just go ahead and get the surface polished up and get all the dirt off of there. And a little bit of brake cleaner, get it off. So once you get your knuckle cleaned out, I like to put a little bit of green Loctite and just barely lightly smear it in so that the bearing has a good grip. This part's pretty important. We've made tooling to facilitate the process. The trick here is you wanna make sure that the knuckle is completely level so that when you're pressing in the bearing, it goes in straight. You need to make sure that it pushes on the outer race but still has enough clearance to clear the knuckle. So you wanna make sure that you seat the bearing all the way down and that your groove for the clip is accessible so that way you can get the clip back in. So now we can restall the clip. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and press in one side and then start working it around the knuckle until both sides clip in. And then you can take a flathead screwdriver and very lightly and gently, just go ahead and tap the outsides of it, make sure that it's fully seated in the groove. Now you're ready to install the knuckle back on the X3. What we wanna do is grab the upper A-arm, go ahead and pick it up, and we're gonna slide our knuckle over the ball joint and get our washer and nut and go ahead and tighten them up. 
Running your 6 inch extension back through the bottom ball joint hole and your 19 millimeter, we can go ahead and tighten up the ball joint nut. Now we can go ahead and get our cotter pin back in the hole and work it back around the ball joint. This part's pretty important. You wanna make sure that the clip is completely against the shaft itself because this is really close to the axle boot and you don't want it to rub and make a hole in your axle boot. Now we can go ahead and put our A-arm up and we can get our axle back inside the bearing. All right, grab the lower A-arm, go ahead and stab your lower ball joint back in the hole. Once you do that, go ahead and take your 15 millimeter bolt, run it back through there, and we tighten up the nut. Now using your 15 millimeter end wrench in your socket, we can go ahead and tighten up the bolt. Now we can go ahead and hook our sway bar link back up, take the bolt, slide it through the hole, and then put your nut back on. Now we can go ahead and get our shock back on there. So break it loose, or if you had somebody holding it, I like put it down. Put your lower bolt in, and then we can go ahead and tighten her down. Now that we got the lower shot bolt on, we can go ahead and put the rotor and hub back on. A little bit of anesthesia or some grease around the surface will keep it from hanging up on you later on down the road. All right, get our axle washer and nut and go ahead and torque them down. Now we can go ahead and get our cotter pin and get it back in there and work it back around the nut. Once you do that, get our brake caliper, slide it over the rotor, and go ahead and get the bolts in it and tighten her up. All right, moving on to the next step. Now we can go ahead and get our tie rod Get it back in the knuckle and get your bolt in there. Don't forget to put your cotter pin back on. So we got everything wrapped up. Make sure everything's tight. And you can go ahead and put your wheel tire back on and you're done. I have some really good information, but I honestly don't think Dixie's impressed. Oh man. All right, so that's Manny walking you through how to change the wheel bearing on your k and X3. You guys already know what to do. Go like this video, and for more, go subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we're gonna keep showing you how to get it done.